All right, friends, welcome back to the sawmill. We got a big oak log on the mill today. This is one of those oak logs we drug out of the log yard about a month ago. It's been on the ground for probably two years, maybe longer, I can't remember. I got so many logs, I'm losing track of how old they are, which means I need to get them on the sawmill because they've been on the ground too long. 102 inches, that's just over eight feet. This right here is actually the butt cut of the tree, but there's a lot of taper in it and it's got an oval shape to it. So that makes for some uh, challenges when you're sawing it because an oak, a butt cut of an oak tree around here usually yields quarter sawn lumber because it's nice and straight and round and the pith is usually centered. That's not the case in this one. It's got an oval shape to it. Diameter down here is 21 inches on the operator side. Now, since we have this oval shape going on, I'm just going to square it up and flat saw it at five quarter and see what we get. That's really your only option on something like this, but it should yield some really nice boards because limited knots. Now, down here on the far end was the bottom of the tree. The diameter is 26 inches, so we got a good amount of taper in this log to deal with. So a few things here, friends, and we'll get started. The first thing is, on the sawmill, a Joe Mean Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want those blades, give him a phone call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. Also, I'm still working with this new camera and this audio equipment, so you guys let me know down in the comments how it looks. And for you viewers that are wearing headphones with your videos when you watch them at home, let me know how the audio is coming through. I did some different settings on this microphone so hopefully it's coming through both of the channels and not just one. But uh, that's about it, I guess. We'll square this one up and see how it looks. I don't think I'll finish this today because it's 12 o'clock and we're expecting some thunderstorms in about an hour. So if it does rain us out, we'll go down to the wood shop because I need to run some lumber through the molder. And one last thing here, guys, and we'll get started. Go check out my website. There's a link down below. I've been putting some smaller slabs and some lumber on there and it's selling out pretty fast. So by the time you see this video, I'm not sure if anything will be left on there. I need to start putting some more stuff on there. I've also updated the about me section because a lot of people have been asking how I got into sawmilling and how that all happened. And I'm starting to go through the process of updating that to kind of tell my story on how I ended up with the wood miser doing what I do today. And it's an ongoing little section i guess i'll be updating it as i have time so go check it out there's a link down below and we'll thank everybody on patreon for supporting me here on the channel i really appreciate you guys so let's fire up the yanmar and open this one up and see how it looks <laughs>
All right, friends, it's been about two hours since we was working on that log. And guys, the storm moved in and it was a lot worse than they predicted. It was really bad. The winds got pretty crazy up here. There's a lot of damage up here on my property, a lot of damage. I don't know if you guys can hear us in the background, there's chainsaws running everywhere in this valley right now. There's trees down everywhere. Let me show you guys the damage we got here. It's pretty bad. So right there, we have the chicken house. But I tell you what, it's missing something. Can you guys see what it's missing? That's right, the roof is completely gone. Let me show you guys where it's at. While I was standing up here at the sawmill, I did see the roof fly off in this field behind me. And to be honest with you, I thought it was just the metal. That didn't surprise me. The actual trusses and also the OSB, everything came off. It ripped the roof completely off the building. And it's a good ways back here. All right, guys. Right here is the roof of the chicken house, the entire roof, the trusses, everything, the OSB, everything came off. The metal was just ripped up. Over there's my two by sixes. I may be able to salvage some of those, hopefully. See how that goes. Over here's some more of them. It just tore it up, guys. It completely ripped that roof off. Let me show you guys how far away we are from the chicken house. Right there is the roof. As I turn around, right there. So right there's the sawmill building and the chicken house is probably, you know, 100 feet the other direction. I would say I'm at least 80 yards from the chicken house. That's amazing. It wouldn't surprise me if some of the metal came off. That's happened before but for the entire roof to come off that building. That's impressive. I mean, that's, uh, that's crazy right there. I didn't think that would happen. And see this field over here where the chicken roof is located doesn't even belong to me. It belongs to my neighbor. So now I gotta come all the way over here with my tractor, clean up that mess before I start rebuilding the roof. My goodness. Oh, and don't go anywhere. There's more damage. You guys hang in there. I'm not done yet. There's a two by six that came off the chicken house. Got stuff laying everywhere. All right, guys, got a tree down. This is a Bradford pear. No shocker here that it did fall over. But check this out on the other side of it. Guys, I dodged a bullet right here. This could have been bad. Right there, we got the 754. And luckily, I had it pulled up just enough to where the tree kind of Landed on the land plane just a little and missed hitting the tractor. That right there would have been very bad. Very bad. I have insurance, but that still would have been really bad. Got some more damage in the front yard. Both of these pear trees split in the middle. Several limbs laying down. Also some damage to the house. You can see right up there on the corner. Got some metal that got pulled off. And in addition to that, we have asphalt shingles on our house and they're laying all over the yard. I bet we lost probably 20 to 30 shingles, maybe more, I don't know. Man, that's probably the worst of the damage right there is the house. I can repair the chicken house, I can get trees up, but damage to your house, that's when things get expensive. And yes, I have insurance, but things are still high. <laughs> So are deductibles. I don't know if you guys can tell, but my neighbor's barn is right down there and half of it fell over. It actually fell in the road. So that road is a right way that comes to my farm and my neighbor's place. And the entire roof of that barn was laying on the right of way. So I had to take my tractor down there in the middle of this storm with the help of a buddy of mine and, and my wife, she went with us as well. And we had to pull that out of the roadway. And now he's got a mess down there. He's got a barn that's halfway standing. The roof is laying all over the field. Nails everywhere. Just a mess, guys. A complete mess. You know, they were calling for storms today, but they were not saying anything about, to my knowledge, severe weather or nothing like that. I didn't you usually get alerts on your phone when you're going to have severe weather. And I didn't get one alert on my phone today. But come to think of it, I was in airplane mode filming the sawmill today with my camera. So, the alerts probably didn't come through, I guess. 
now that I think of it. Huh. That would make sense right there. 